So in the last video, we talked about the LC oscillator. And we said that if we have a perfect inductor and a perfect capacitor, then they will, the solution to those differential equations is V0 times cosine of omega naught T. And V0 is the initial voltage across the capacitor. And omega naught is, this is L, this is C, is 1 over square root of LC. That's the resonant frequency. And last time we analyzed this circuit using math, but in this time I'm going to try to present a more intuitive view of it. Uh, and the one that I was first introduced to that makes makes the most sense to me. So let's say we have a voltage across the capacitor initially. Um, we know that we'll have the same voltage uh, across the inductor, or so minus and plus. So we know that the current through an inductor is just equal to 1 over L times the integral and uh, please don't be scared by the math. It's uh, it's just conveying a concept. Um, it's equal to the integral of the voltage across the inductor. So if we've got a negative voltage across the inductor, we're going to start to cause a current to flow in this direction. We're going to start to cause a current to flow like this. And the longer we wait, uh, the longer we apply this voltage, the more and more current is going to flow. So or sorry, current uh, current will actually be flowing in this direction, I. So, okay, um, as we apply the voltage for longer and longer, the current gets larger and larger. But as we apply the voltage for longer and longer, this current is flowing into the capacitor. So it's charging, it's, a, it's actually discharging the capacitor because more positive charges are accumulating on this plate, which are canceling out the initial negative charges that were on that plate. And at some point, the positive charges are going to cancel out all the negative charges that were initially there, and there's going to be no voltage across the capacitor, zero volts, and there's going to be a large current flowing through the inductor. So we've gone from having a voltage across the capacitor and no current in the circuit to current flowing through the inductor and no voltage across the capacitor. But this current is going to be maintained. So the current is still flowing because the inductor doesn't like to change its current instantaneously. And more positive charges are going to start to accumulate on this capacitor plate. And so the polarity of the voltage is going to invert. So the capacitor voltage, which was at time zero, initially uh, V0, eventually goes down to zero volts and the current, so I'm going to draw the current through the inductor here and the voltage across the capacitor here. So the current through the inductor was initially zero and it's going up and up and up and the capacitor voltage is going down. Eventually the capacitor voltage inverts uh, until the current keeps flowing, current keeps flowing and eventually the current stops. So we've got no more current and the capacitor is completely charged and it's charged to a value minus V naught, assuming there are no losses in the circuit. And similarly, the current, which was initially, um, initially zero, got to be very large and then comes back down, the current is now zero again. And this cycle is gonna repeat itself except going the other direction. So we've got a positive or a negative voltage across the capacitor. So we're going to cause a current to, now to flow this way. Uh, again, discharging the capacitor, going back up like this. And the inductor current is now going to increase, but it's flowing the other direction. And we see that the solution is sinusoidal. And if we draw them, if we draw these two things on the same plot, so I'm going to draw redraw this in green uh, now bear with me because they don't have the same units, uh, but if we draw them on the same plot with respect to time, we're going to see that there's a phase shift between them. So when this guy, when the capacitor voltage is at its maximum, the inductor current is at its minimum. And when the inductor current is at its maximum, the capacitor voltage is zero at its minimum. 
And this phase shift is characteristic of LC oscillators, this shift between phase shift between the current and the voltage. So this is the current through the inductor or the capacitor if you prefer, and this is the voltage across the capacitor. So we're effectively switching the energy from being stored by the capacitor to being stored by the inductor. And the inductor is storing it as current, the capacitor is storing it as voltage, but it's uh, and it's going to oscillate back and forth forever. So we're basically trading um, voltage for current. And so this is uh, this is sort of a more intuitive way to understand what's happening in the LC oscillator. Uh, it's not as as rigorous, but it's uh, we're we're basically trading off uh, one for the other. Now the more interesting and helpful part about this picture is we can predict what will happen if there's just, say, a little bit of series loss in the inductor. So there's a little bit of resistance R. Well, we know that as the current through the inductor starts to, do, starts to increase, uh, some of that current will be uh, dropped, or some of that current will be lost, power will be lost through current flowing through the resistance. So as power starts to be lost, the current will decrease with time, and so will the voltage across the capacitor, because we're losing energy, so we can't charge back up to where we were at the at the beginning. And eventually, this will fall to zero. So if we wait for long enough, the oscillation will die out completely, and it'll go, both the current and the voltage uh, will go to zero. And so that's that's what happens when we add a series resistance to the inductor or similarly a uh, parallel resistance to the capacitor. If we want to think about it in terms of the system's poles, uh, we can actually do that too. So if we have the complex S-plane, when we've just got N, uh, so this is sigma, this is J omega, when we've just got an inductor and a capacitor, the poles are exactly on the imaginary axis. As we add a resistance, they'll start to move this direction. They'll start to move towards the left half plane. And that corresponds to a, an e to the sigma t term times our original cosine of omega naught t. So that corresponds to the resistance being increased. So R added. So we're adding a series resistance to the inductor. So we're causing the poles to move towards the left half plane and this will cause some decay uh, eventually. Now, if we want our oscillator to have sustained oscillation, we want these poles to stay exactly on the imaginary axis. And that doesn't seem initially possible, right? Because we've got uh, our inductors and capacitors are always gonna have some loss associated with them. So we need a way of compensating for that loss. Uh, and there's a couple ways to analyze this. The, Perhaps one of the easiest, in my opinion, is adding a negative resistance. Uh, and this might seem a little weird at first, but if we've got our, say we've got our RLC circuit, and here we're assuming that the capacitor has some parallel loss or the inductor had some series loss and we've transformed it into a resistor, um, then if we add here a negative resistor, minus r, then we can cancel out this loss, if we could do that. Um, now we can do that, and that's what we're gonna go over in the next few videos, but this is a way to create uh, an essentially perfect LC oscillator. And you'll further see that uh, if we add an even larger negative resistance, say negative 2r instead of negative r, then while our poles will initially be uh, in the right half of the complex plane, so over here, um, since the components we use to make the negative resistance aren't perfect, the poles will actually move uh, to the imaginary axis. And in some cases, they might even oscillate about the imaginary axis. But we will be able to create an oscillator by introducing this negative resistance, which is uh, what we'll go over in the next few videos uh, in the, about the cross-coupled pair, which is probably the easiest way of creating a negative resistance. So that's, that's what we have to look forward to in the next video. Thanks.